um, I discovered that there was a local band, a man, Charlie Tur. None of these people were Cajun or Creole, but they had um, they had been taken under the wing of the late Dewey Balfa, and they were, I mean, Charlie's a wonderful, authentic sounding Cajun accordion player. So we started, we became followers of this local Cajun band, the Chicago Cajun Aces. They had monthly dances, and I even convinced Steve to do the dance lessons at the beginning, and we'd sort of stumble around with each other, you know. Um, but then I started having dreams about playing the accordion. And, um, but these weren't like, I mean, I'm a psychologist, right? So I think dreams are important. And I sometimes <laughs> talk about my patients' dreams. But these dreams, this wasn't a dream like, ah, oh, what does it mean? What's the hidden association? It was this incredibly physical, visceral dream where I would wake up and I could feel the accordion in my hands. So maybe I could read that passage about the yeah, dreams. Yeah. Okay. itself playing me as the bellows opened and closed in and out ebb and flow no beginning and no end with the music all around expanding me as far as I could go and then drawing me back in filling me up and sending me out again as natural as essential as breathing and then the music a river flowing through my fingers and onto the buttons spilling into the air now coming to wakefulness I held the remnants of the dream through lingering sensation more than sound I could still feel the weight of the accordion in my hands, so real, so present, and oddly familiar, this little box I had heard and finally seen from a distance, but hadn't yet touched. Its music had haunted my days, and now it began to infiltrate my dreams with a sweet and unrelenting embrace that refused to let me go. So after nine months of having those dreams, I didn't count, I just afterwards realized, nine months I decided I, I have to have an accordion. And so <laughs> I started looking around for, and there actually are a lot of accordion shops in Chicago because it's, of course, has a role in almost uh, any traditional culture. It just spread like wildfire after it was um, invented. But they didn't really have Cajun accordions there, and so what I got was a, an old mom and pop German store. I said, oh, we've got what you like, and it only will cost $100. Someone else had said, we could order one from Louisiana, but that'll cost you close to $1,000. And I thought, that can't possibly be true. <laughs> yeah. uh, and also, I, uh, given my, my history at attempting to learn musical instruments, that did not seem like a smart investment. And um, so I bought this little antique. There's a picture of it in the book. I, I can't really see it from there, but feel free to come up and take a look. And, and I thought, boy, this is odd. You know, I, I sniffed it, and um, it smelled musty, and it looked like someone had repaired it with lacquer. And what it turned out to be, and this was how I first connected with Mark Sabwa, I finally decided, I gotta find out what this is, because it looked old, but it looked also like, yeah, like a picture of uh, an accordion, actually, in Anne Savoie's book. So I took a picture <coughs> and wrote to Mark, and Mark has always been, he can be sort of a, what would we say, exotic, <laughs> but he's, he's in, been unfailingly nice to me, to us. Uh, I think it's partly because we've always traveled to Louisiana, and I mean, recently we get to go by ourselves, but, but for a long time we always had our kids with us. They didn't always, you know, our kids, never, the only reason our kids went to Disneyland is because our parents took them, but we, no, we're going to Louisiana again, kids, okay? Um, and uh, so Mark's always been very nice and gracious, and it started with that letter, and uh, when he wrote back and told me what I had, and I actually had something that might be valuable as an antique, it was an Eagle Brand accordion, for anyone who knows accordion lore, made by the same family that makes Monarch and Sterling, so it's like, yeah, this is Oh, it's a, from between World War One and Two, and it's very interesting. But of course, it's not playable. And why don't you buy one from my shop? You know, he suggested actually the the um, the honer, the new Cajun style honer they were making then, as a good uh, mid-range, which it was. Uh, that was a good choice.